nonfiction books have a ton to teach people generally. I mean, I'm pretty biased in that I think if you were to cobble together a list of the 50 best nonfiction books, I think that would be a better education than most people get in in four years of university. But it's something that, you know, it takes a lot and it's not appealing just to sit down and read generally, you know, and so it feels like, yeah, experimenting with a format that that has to evolve eventually. The thing you said about the nonfiction books being better than education, I connect in my mind to like the the pedagogy almost of Dash, where it's like the the traditional university education you get is like that big book with the index of all the things you need to know, and you just kind of like start at the top, and it, like you're just sort of throwing people into yeah. it. And it feels kind of like boring because you're not sure how do I connect this to like what I actually need in order to survive. Yeah. Whereas nonfiction books, which evolved because of you know market pressures to like be interesting, are kind of like a great <laughs> starting point. And then I just I wonder what the world would look like if it started at the most interesting stuff and got people engaged and like on a path and then rocketed them past Mm -hmm. what's just sort of like easy popular stuff to read into the sort of like deeper nerdier territory. So it's like, imagine if we gave every seventh grader like the short history of nearly everything by Bill Bryson. Amazing book, covers all sorts of different branches of science. And then you're like, okay, cool. What was most interesting to you? What questions do you have? Oh, like the stuff about light? Cool. Let's go do like all these experiments and then you can read the textbook about it. And then, oh no, actually you want to learn about biology? Okay, cool. Like we're going to go on this field trip or whatever, or, like we'll dissect a frog. And at that point you're already, you care about it. So it's like, there's motivation to continue. But when you're just like, okay, let's crack open the dictionary and start at the first word. It's like, that's not how you learn language, but that's sort of like what pedagogy is based on in schools. And it's just, it's really sad to me that there seems to be no, because the main purpose it really serves in a lot of cases is like babysitting for a really long time, that that's like good enough basically for for parents and for society. But like, I don't know, it's like, doesn't feel like it's good enough anymore. Subscribe to Outliers with Daniel Scrivener now in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you like to listen to podcasts and be the first to hear about new episodes and receive exclusive content by joining our newsletter at outliers.fm. I can't wait to help you level up and live your best life.